Hey there, friends. What's going on? It's Kodiak here. Welcome back to Legacy Gaming. And yes, we are talking about Helldivers 2. Once again, more leaks. The leaks are out of control. And you guys have probably already seen a lot of this. But do you have the context to think about it? That's really what we're going to dive into today. Because here's the truth. This is the reality for a smaller game, smaller studio that is getting massive success. A lot of eyeballs on the game and a lot of people looking to exploit it for whatever reason, whether that's popularity, fame, internet points, it does not matter. This game has up to, I think, 700,000 concurrent players at its max point so far across PC and PlayStation 5. So there are a lot of people playing this game. And of course, there are going to be people in there that are looking to crack into the files, data mine, and figure out what is next. Now, I will say, I think the leaks are going to slow down just a little bit because mostly those leaks have been coming from Reddit and the Helldivers Reddit moderators have said they are going to start cracking down. Any violators, any leaking happening on the Reddit will be met with a one day ban and then future violations will be met with a longer ban. Now, here's my stance on this. I think that leaks at this point are kind of fun. The initial hype of the game has died down. We don't know what's coming in the future for the game. And look, these files are pretty easy to access based on all of the leaking that has happened. It almost feels like the developers want people to find them. Now, a lot of these leaks are based on things that were in Helldivers 1. So I don't think we're talking about anything that's so wild and crazy and out there. There's a couple, but most of it is stuff that, yeah, they just took it from Helldivers 1 and said this would be really cool in Helldivers 2. And I respect the devs for that because they had a great game then and they have an even better game now. I will say though, you have to respect the devs' future and their vision for where Helldivers 2 can go, right? Because every leaked item, every leaked thing presents a not finished asset to the community. And of course, any developer wants to show the finished product, not always wanting to show how the sausage is made, right? So I will say the devs need to clean that up from their side. They need to hide these assets in the game to avoid this happening further in the future. Data miners are, will, have always been doing this type of thing. It's never going to stop. And the developers need to take the onus on themselves to protect their game's future. That being said, this stuff is out there and you all come to us for Helldivers 2 content. So we want to deliver and we want to talk about it. Now we don't always cover leaks. We're not going to turn into a leaks channel. That's just not our MO. We want to keep bringing you guides and builds and all that great stuff that you've come to know and love from our channel. But the fact that there is so much Helldivers 2 leaked content out there makes it kind of impossible to avoid. We're at this weird inflection point between the hype dying and no roadmap being released. I will say it is always fun to cover leaks before that roadmap comes out because it's all hopium. We don't know if this stuff is real or fake or whatever, but it's in the game files as far as we can tell but you have to take it with a grain of salt. Nothing here is official. It's all just continued hype, continue to build on the success of Helldivers 2. So let's dive into it. You guys know that mechs are coming. We have talked about mechs. The team has officially shown off mechs, the XO44, which was a mech in Helldivers 1 that's being brought into Helldivers 2. And then we recently talked about the XO48. Well, we've seen both of them in much better capacities, better gameplay footage showcasing both the XO44, that's the one with the Gatling gun and rockets, as well as the XO48 with the twin auto cannons. I don't know if they're gonna call them the XO44 and 48, that's not been revealed by anybody as far as I know, but it doesn't really matter because it's the function. It's what actually can the mech do in the game that matters. So there is no secret at this point, mechs are coming, we all know that. Looks like there's going to be two at least to start. We haven't seen anything outside of XO44 and XO48. Now the newness comes with additional vehicles being added to the game. We've seen two showcased in various capacities so far. First is a scout vehicle. This is a three person vehicle with a driver, a passenger, and some sort of machine gun turret on the back. I love this. I cannot wait to have this in the game. And while it does exclude that fourth person, I run with a squad of three usually, whether it's living and Schmo or living in our buddy Mike, it doesn't really matter. There's usually three of us at any given time, not necessarily four. So the idea that we have a three person vehicle, we can quickly move around the map. And obviously it's got some firepower with that machine gun. That's really exciting. Now, the rumor is that this is going to be in all of these vehicles are going to be a one time use per mission. If they run out of ammo or if they die, that is it. That could also apply to the mech. So it's gonna be really interesting to see 
if that's the case, because that's the natural way to balance something like a vehicle or a mech being overpowered. Now, speaking of being overpowered, there was another, just an image as far as we could find on the internet of the M5 APC. This is another vehicle from Helldivers 1 that we think is coming to Helldivers 2. It is almost identical to its Helldivers counterpart. It's a four person vehicle. That means it can fit the entire team. It's got an auto cannon up top and light machine guns on the sides. I think they're stalwarts. They look like stalwarts, but some sort of light machine gun on the side. That is a very powerful and cool vehicle. Think about what an auto cannon could do to, let's say, a Charger or even a Bile Titan. There is a lot of potential there, and if your whole team can fit inside, that means your entire team stays together. Really cool stuff. Again, when you think about balance, you have to think about how often can players call these down, how many of them can a player call down, because if you could run two of them with a driver and an auto cannon, and then a second one with a driver and an auto cannon, well, that's vastly different than one fully topped off with four players. Just something that you have to think about when you're playing both sides, from the player side and the developer side. Now, that is not all. We also saw some new weapons and backpacks supposedly coming to the game. What we saw was not gameplay, but images of different weapons with some rough stats and flavor text, nothing fully complete. Still interesting to talk about. First is the ARC-12 Blitzer. This is a shotgun that blasts a wide burst of high voltage electricity that arcs between all units, enemies, or otherwise. Very similar to the ARC Thrower currently in the game, but in a more shotgun sense. So think of a more horizontal burst. That would be my guess. We also saw the SG-8P Punisher Plasma, a modified Punisher shotgun that fires exploding plasma rounds. And according to the flavor text, exploding plasma can injure squad mates. Now we talked about plasma in our recent wishlist video when discussing how they could continue to evolve the weapon offerings in the game. So it's really cool to see that, yes, this was already on their mind. And it looks like the SG-8P is one of the first plasma weapons we could get in the game. We've also seen the CB-9 exploding crossbow. This fires a powerful exploding bolt, which does do maximum damage upon direct impact. It also says that gravity must be accounted for, and I am excited to see more projectile weapons in the game on top of the various hit scan weapons. I think you need a healthy combination of those, and if they can really balance the exploding crossbow, whether it's a support weapon or a primary weapon, if they can balance it right, I can see a lot of teams having at least one member of their squad using something like this. There were a couple other things. One final weapon, the R36 Eruptor. This is a bolt action rifle that fires jet assisted shells that explode shrapnel in all directions upon impact. Not recommended for close quarters. Top to bottom, this one just looks awesome. It looks like it could do a massive amount of damage. And that's pretty exciting. There were also two more leaks in the form of backpacks. First was the BX7 Displacer Pack. This is a portable teleportation device which activates the moment before the user would potentially take fatal damage. I think this is really interesting. I don't know how many people would actually run this because it's defensive as opposed to offensive. And I think a lot of players lean on the side of offensive or utility. Imagine this pack throwing you off a cliff or into a pack of other enemies that are waiting. And I think more things like that would add to the hilarity of the game. I know I personally, and I'm sure the rest of the guys on the team do too, love watching like YouTube shorts and those YouTube compilation videos of Helldiver crazy moments happening around the community, and I think the Displacer Pack could definitely add to that. There was also the B1 Supply Pack, and this is the same thing as the current Stratagem, but with six chambers. Now, this one's a little weird. I could see this one either being fake or not fully thought out, or maybe an additional asset that's not going to be used, because it would completely negate the reason to ever use the other Supply Pack. Now, higher difficulties could warrant more ammo, however, in the future, so I could see it going both ways, but it's weird to think that there's going to be one item that truly supersedes another item, but we do see that in stratagems, right? We see that the machine gun uh, sentry, for example, is not as good as the Gatling sentry. So there is a kind of like a low tier and a high tier version. I can see that being the case with the B1 supply pack. Now, here's the thing, the leaks continue. A leaked list of stratagems has been circulating on Twitter, and this is where things get wonky because it's a translated list from, I believe, Korean, showcasing some new and things we've already talked about stratagems that could be coming to the game. So what does this list reveal? Well, first, it reinforces a few things that we've talked about here in this video and other videos. We see Location Transfer Pack. That could be the BX7 Displacer Pack. 
We also see medical supplies. That could be the B1 supply pack. We also see a call in for a light armored vehicle. That could be the scout vehicle we just talked about before. The one with three players, the two in the front and the one on the top turret. Now there are a few new things to note as well. And the first is the Eagle air to air missile. This could be huge if that means that aerial enemies are coming to the game. And that makes complete sense in this 3D environment. There are already instances where an air to air missile would be good. I'm thinking specifically on the automaton side with those drop ships. But if new aerial enemies came to the game, that would completely change everything about Helldivers 2, completely changing sight lines and just adding more chaos to an already chaotic game. We also see Barrier, and this I believe could be a huge squad game changer if someone on your team is bringing a barrier into a mission, because right now the cover system is not foolproof, and oftentimes you're out in the middle of nowhere with no way to protect yourself. This is something Livid has been talking about since the beginning of Helldivers 2, so it's cool to see that this might be coming. We also see something called the Quasar Cannon. This could be alluding to the yellow beamed weapon we talked about the other day that one shots chargers. That would be awesome. We also see things like the commando, heavy machine gun and missile silo. And these are all interesting expansions of existing weapon systems or new, but we're just not entirely sure what they are at this point with limited information. I think the bottom line is this. There is a lot of really cool stuff out there. And with a lot of speculation around the next war bond dropping on March 14th, I think a lot of this stuff that we're talking about in this video and the last video could be coming to the game relatively soon. I would imagine mechs are going to be part of the first content update. And if the rest of it comes great, if not, I think it's okay because mechs as a standalone addition to Helldivers 2, it's gonna be huge. I wanna remind you all that war bonds never expire. So if you hear March 14th and you panic because you've only unlocked like two or three things, don't worry, war bonds are never going to expire. You are always going to have them and you can invest your medals into them when you're ready. There is a bright future for this game as long as the devs stay out front, talk about their future, and hopefully release a roadmap really soon. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on all of the leaked content, whether it's vehicles, mechs, weapons, stratagems. Let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for checking out another Legacy Gaming video. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here on the team, thanks for watching and fly on.